dear friends i was off the youtube for quite a long time you must have observed usually within a week i give a video um i was under quarantine for me in covid positive from 28th of april and on 12th i was released from quarantine and i'm gradually getting back to my mathematical routine which of course makes me happy without doing mathematics nothing much makes me happy uh, i was trying to read some books during the whole process of quarantine but some of the you know the tensions weigh on your mind but yeah i was reading a new book on quantum mechanics by um, carlo rovelli a very famous physics writer popular physics writer but a very good physicist also uh, expert in quantum gravity so he wrote a book called helgoland it's about heisenberg and his uncertainty principle and its consequences in the way we look at the physical world that that certain that small i that not small actually a very deep idea he developed a while alone uh, trying to heal himself from some disease in an island some allergic disease in an island called helgoland had actually changed our whole view of the physical world physical reality today i am actually going to speak about geometry this is uh, this approach of you know, this idea of talking about geometry comes from a question which came under uh, comment which came under one of my videos where i spoke about the parallel postulate of euclid and there uh, someone wanted to know where to start reading geometry once again and i i referred a book name of a book and i want to show you that book and tell you what that book is and uh, what uh, and why i referred to this book this book is called the wonder book of geometry by david acheson a mathematician himself you can see the photo of david acheson also here if you want so this book is wonderful because it starts from very basics it starts from euclid's element it talks about pythagoras theorem and it talks about the thales theorem many of us blindly remember the fact that if you take a circle and take a diameter and take a point on the circumference and join the end points of the diameter then the angle subtended at the at the circumference is 90 degrees this theorem is actually a theorem due to thales who was who is sometimes held held as the original or the first scientists of the world in the sense in a scientist where uh, scientists who applied this idea of proving things so but this book also has very interesting collection of ideas and facts about geometry he talks about the even the converse of thales theorem and it says that from the thales theorem there are two possible converses that can happen that if you have a circle and you take two points on the circumference join them by a chord take a point on the uh, circumference and join the two end points of this chord and then if the angle is 90 degree then that chord must be the diameter this is what one of the uh, converses another could be that take a diameter take any point p on the plane and then if the angle subtended by the diameter is at at p is 90 degrees then the point p must be on the circumference so two converses are possible so but the converses are not never taught in school he here talks about sivas theorem obviously he doesn't talk about many losses theorem and many other thing one of the most interesting chapter here is about the farmer's problem the farmer gave a question that if you have a triangle abc find a point p inside the triangle abc such that the sum of the lengths of p from a p from b and p from c that sum that is pa plus pb plus pc that is minimum and he gives a wonderful proof by somebody called viviani it's called the viviani's theorem now i will try to do that uh, wonderful uh, ex little exercise with you sometimes using my ipad uh, this book has let me have the chapters i uh, so again i want to show you this book it's available at oxford university available on amazon also so maybe your school library or your college library should have it everything is everything given here is not for school kids but he also has a nice chapter on what how in england a uh, first 
fight started against whether elements of Euclid should really be taught to school children. And a lot of reforms came and elements of Euclid as the way Euclid had written the elements are not taught to school children. So that is why when we learn geometry, we never learnt it in the way the Euclid did it. Because I can tell you, if you take Euclid's book, proposition 1, book 1, proposition 1, you can un un easily understand it. It says given a line segment, make an equilateral triangle with it, proposition 1. So immediately you talk about circles and everything that come in, immediately you are into more deeper things. The second result, second thing I will not tell you right away is, is a harder one and because I want to do it uh, in one of my videos. Immediately I can tell you that lot of teachers, school teachers will also be in a problem if that proposition is given to them, if they are not prepared or never heard of it. So if you go by Euclid, it's a very hard uh, job for many, many students. That is why the whole thing has been made a lot easier so that student can grasp the main ideas. And he also speaks about a book by Robert. He seems to have a collection of huge old books or he has gone into the gone into museums. There's a book by uh, Robert Recorde. He, Robert Record is the man who gave us the equality sign. Today we write A is equal to B. We don't even think about this sign. I, I am also very curious to know before equality signs, how to, when we wanted to say that two elements are equal, how did we show them? I have also no idea what. Robert Record I had known from uh, uh, that he was a maths teacher and he had, he was co also called one of the finest maths teacher because he had this idea of not putting proofs into the head of the students immediately but rather looking at the theorem doing some experimentation with the results and try to do some experiments and see whether the results are true so putting in a little bit of seed or a germ of experimental mathematics which is now in fact a very big way of doing mathematics so here he gives after that uh, here he gives this photo of, uh, here on the this side you see there is this photo of three books he this author himself has read as a school children and the last one is teach yourself geometry by abort uh, so look at this this doesn't exactly follow euclid the so now the books which you have written read and i have read as a student student has has a very different way has taken taken into this has gone by this uh, reform that was taken up in england actually in fact louis carroll who is actually whose actual name is Charles Dodson, Louis Carroll of the famous Alice in Wonderland, whose actual name is Charles Dodson, a professor of math at Oxford, was against this change. He wanted uh, Euclid to remain as Euclid, but people change it, and I think it's for the better. I, I understand why it's good. I have seen through Euclid's element. It, it is please understand that it is not easy for school kids to go through this. Euclid is not something absolutely elementary. So there are many many interesting results are given here many interesting uh, stories many interesting facts in fact again coming back to tales at the end many people wouldn't know that when we study triangles similar triangles come much later we speak out congruent triangles but similar triangles were used to measure heights of pyramids and all other things uh, many many buildings by thales himself so the idea of similar triangles was very very ancient much before Euclid could actually write down. Euclid was actually not writing down his results. Maybe some results are his, but he was collecting a lot of results from many, many different scholars of geometry and made them into a coherent piece, gave geometry a very nice logical framework of basic assumptions, axioms, and then proposition. And this framework of which Euclid gave is a framework by which we do mathematics still date right please understand that these points lines all these things we what we try to describe what Euclid has also tried, tried to describe uh, or define is not really definable you and I understand what points and lines are and what is the meaning of a plane and then go ahead with it so mathematics usually starts with certain quantities which need not be defined but we can have some relations among them which looks obvious which we call axioms and using those relations now we can get, get into more deeper properties about them which are not obvious and that is the framework of geometry and hence of all mathematics for example set 
many people would say, oh, it's a collection of well-defined objects. Now there will be a question of what is well-defined. And Butter and Russell showed us that set really doesn't have a definition. So those stories will come later on. I'll keep on telling stories. It's all about storytelling, friends. Human beings are always good at storytelling. So mathematics is also a good story. And it, as I told you in one of my earlier videos, it's the best story ever told. So here also we are doing some kind of storytelling. And I'll continue to do some storytelling also. So uh, I will tell you about what are the books I have just juggled in this uh, 14 days of quarantine. And I hope all of you stay safe and I hope our country recovers from this calamity and we gradually get back to doing what we have, what we want to do. And hope this, you like this video and again, I love this little book. I am also trying to write a book called a Coffee Time with Euclid and that is what is the, the name of this uh, little, little talks on geometry that I have planned. So, this book is completely on Euclidean geometry. You hardly find any discussion on non-Euclidean things. So, please have a look at this book and I hope if you take it up and while you are traveling, while you are traveling possibly, taking a, sipping a cup of coffee, sitting on your garden or just idling on to idle away your time, this is a very good companion. Thank you. Have a good day and stay safe.